27-23. Cowboys. This is J-Mac Sports 24-7. I am J-Mac. Thank you for coming to the channel. Thank you for coming to the channel. Dallas Cowboys. Win the game. That's what you need. Just, you, you're just trying to get that W, right? No matter how you do it. Someone says an ugly win. Someone says an ugly win. You take it any way you can get it. Who are we? Who are the Dallas Cowboys in 22-23? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't even, I don't know where to begin. The filthy Eagles look like the best team in the National Football League. But yet, these professional prognosticators, experts, analysts, Many of them say the Dallas Cowboys last week were the favorite to get to the Super Bowl and win it. Many say that. And then we see the Cowboys play against the worst team in the National Football League, the Houston Texans. And if it wasn't for Demarcus Lawrence, on second down in the fourth quarter was second and goal for Houston. They was about to punch it in for a touchdown. But I guess the football guards looked down and touched Demarcus Lawrence and the Dallas Cowboys and Demarcus Lawrence got in the backfield and was able to stop uh, the running back for no yard gain. What's wrong with the Dallas Cowboys? Uh, unfortunately, I did not get to watch the game live because I guess because the Cowboys was playing Houston, Texas, and it wasn't a, it wasn't a national televised game. So I was uh, forced to watch the Filthy Eagles, some of it, just some of it, and then. I watched the Steelers game, some of that. Um, then and pretty much just start flipping the channels and watching something else. But I kept checking the score online of the, of the Dallas Cowboy game. And we went up 7-0. Right down the field and scored. I was fortunate enough to watch the highlights uh, on YouTube and so that uh, we look promising, that first drive. But here it is right here. Dallas Cowboy fans, here it is right here. Our defense gave the Houston Texans 23 points and put them in a position to win the game. I saw the interceptions by Dak Prescott. One, I think we were um, near the goal line, the Houston Texans goal line. I don't know what to do or what to believe at this point because watching the Eagles, I hate to say this. I, I hate to say this, and I, I hate to say this. I really do hate to say this, but the Eagles look like they are the team to beat and will win the National Football League Championship. They will win the Super Bowl. I, I the thought of it, the thought of that just makes the back of my the, the neck on the back of my the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Just the thought of that. The Eagles. We're playing the Philadelphia Eagles on Christmas Eve. This is what I heard. This is what I heard, and I hope this is not to be true. That it was a coach's decision 
for the Dallas Cowboys to not play in pads this week. And it showed. It showed. And let's look at this. Let's look at this. Week one, we give up 19 points, our defense, to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Our offense only put three up, Cooper Rush. Second game, we played against the Cincinnati Bengals. We gave up 17 points. We put up 20, Cooper Rush. Week three, we give up 16 points. Okay, getting better on defense. We put up 23 against the Giants, Cooper Rush. Twenty-five, ten, Washington, week four. Defense getting better. It looks that way. It looks that way. Twenty, twenty-two to ten, week five, the Los Angeles, Los Angeles Rams. Cooper Rush. Defense still, still looking good. Cooper Rush last game, the field to Eagles, 26 points. Cooper Rush don't play defense. 26 points we give up. We get 17. Detroit Lions, okay. Defense looks like it's back. Six points to Detroit, though, to Detroit. We put up 24. Chicago Bears, our defense gave up 29 points, but we dropped 49 on them, but they took 29 from us. The next game against Green Bay, we give up 31 points. 30, Green Bay. So we have this incredible game, week 11 against the Minnesota Vikings. 40 to 3. That defense looked banging. It looks like doomsday. Right? But it was a short week. I believe it was a short week. We played the Giants 28 to 20. It's a, it's a divisional game. We give up 20 points. You expect that divisional game to be more close on a short week. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at. That's the admiration I'm looking at. Because come week 13, we playing the Colts. I know it's the Colts, but we drop 54 on them. We give up 19 points. And most of that came from the fourth quarter. And then week 14, we give up 23 points. Hey, fellow Cowboy Capadres, we cannot win like this. And then I am seeing... I, I, I looked at this stat, a defensive stat. I'm going, this cannot be true. Did we not get one sack in the game? Again, I didn't watch the game. And from the highlights that I've seen, it looks like we got close pretty, pretty often. Um, but they had, a running, they had a running quarterback, a guy that could move out the way. He was, I should say, a mobile quarterback. Um, Davis Mills. Do you know Davis Mills had a higher rating, finished a, with a higher rating than Dak Prescott? 80.5. Dak finished with a 70.9. We're in. <coughs> on the home stretch of the regular season. And. No one ever heard of. Davis Mills. No one but his mama. I bet his daddy don't know who he is. Only his mama know David Mills. Davis Mills. But everybody know Dak Prescott. Everybody know Dak Prescott. I, you know, I, I've been on Twitter, I've been on Facebook, and I've been trying to defend Dak. And... 
this is this is my this is my this is my belief, my personal belief. We don't have anybody on offense or defense to kick another player in the buttocks. During our championship reign in the 90s, we had someone on defense, someone on offense. On offense, it was Troy Aikman, it was Michael Irvin. It was a lot of players that will get into another player's behind. On defense, we had Charles Haley, we had Ken Norton, we had Darren Woodson. Who do we have on our team that will get into another player's behind to say you need to focus? I was thinking about who do we have? Dak, Zeke, C.D. Lamb? Who on defense? Trayvon Dix? Who will get in someone's behind at, at, at this time of the season? No one. We do not have anyone. As I watch the Philadelphia Eagles, they look focused, lasered in. They come in with a mission. They came to play. At the sound of the gun, they came to play. We didn't. They came to play. They look good. I hate to say that. The, the, the Eagles look good. It, no, it, it's not the filthy. It's the Philadelphia Eagles look good. Damn, I hate that. Damn, I hate that. They're playing like a machine. I put it, a machine. And we're still trying to find our way. We're still trying to find our way. And, and, and why do you not practice with pass on? What is the hell is going on with that? I don't get it. I just don't get it. We're not ready. We have, in my opinion, players reading the papers when we do well. And when there's a coach's decision to not put on pads, why? I, I, it, can you imagine? Imagine Jimmy Johnson. Can anyone ever imagine Jimmy Johnson going through a week with no pads? I mean, Jimmy would actually cut someone right now. I saw where Turpin, you know, missed that um, punt return. And we lost the ball. And I believe the Texans scored. I mean, I guess the gods was pretty much touching me, the football gods, looking at me because, you know, I don't have the NFL network and I couldn't watch the game live. So and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad I did, didn't watch the game live. I mean, it, I mean, the aggravation, a uh, frustration, I would have had the level of, of it. I would have had do it, watching it live because I would have watched the game. I would have watched the game. Dak Prescott, 70.9% 70, 70 rating, right? Uh, two interceptions. Uh, threw the ball 39 times. I did see uh, our running backs look decent. Zeke looked really good. 62 yards. Tony Pollard, 42 yards, each with a touchdown. We're averaging four point yards a carry. And that's what I want to average, at least four yards per carry. I want to get four yards on first down, minimum. Minimum, four yards. First down, I want four yards or more. Davis Mills. He averaged 8.3 yards a pass to Dak 7.3. But he only threw the ball 21 times. 21 times.
Our leading receiver was Dalton Schultz. Six receptions, 85, 87 yards. Targeted 10 times. That's our tight end. CeeDee Lamb, our number one wide receiver, was targeted six times. Five receptions. 33 yards. Our number one receiver gets 33 yards. I go and look at the stats over there at the uh, Houston, Texas. Chris Moore, 124 yards, 10 receptions, targeted 11 times. Who was guarding this guy? He was targeted 11 times, caught 10 of them. Again, I didn't watch the game live. Who was guarding Chris Moore? Who was his man? Who was Chris Moore's man? Longest 36 yards. He averaged 12.4 yards a catch. He couldn't be stopped. When you target someone 11 times and they catch 10, we, we know we have a issue with run defense. We know this. But we can't go into the, we can't get to the, the postseason and have issues with pass defense as well. Then I look at the defensive status. Guess who was a leading tackler on defense? If you watched the game, who do you think was the leading tackler watching the game? It was Leighton Vanderhelts. Total 14. One for a loss. But get this. Zero sacks for the entire defense. Zero sacks against an unknown quarterback, only his mama know who he is. And she may have second thoughts. She may have second thoughts. On his mama know who he is. Because I sure didn't. But guess what? We couldn't put him on the ground. We're going to play Jalen Hurts in the Philadelphia Eagles. And we couldn't put this guy, David Mills, a who's who. We couldn't put him on the ground. One time. Four quarters. One time. We couldn't put him on the ground. Next in line for tackles was Deron Bland, a rookie. Draft pick. Uh, six. Three solos. He had an outstanding game last week. Outstanding. I see some promising. I see a lot of promising things for this young man. But I, I, I don't want to play the Philadelphia Eagles. I, I really don't want to play the Philadelphia Eagles because it's, 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 if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, you know what kind of heat we're going we're gonna to get, we're going to catch. You know, you know what kind of heat it's going to be. I mean, you know, I lived in Philadelphia for almost 20 years, so I was at ground zero, so I can handle it. I can handle it. I mean, I was living in Philadelphia when we went 1-15, so I can handle it. But the Eagles didn't win a Super Bowl that year or any of those years. So this, this is the thing you have to think about. Okay, they're kicking ass and taking names. That's what the Eagles are doing right now. They're smacking you in the mouth and say, what you going to do about it? That's what the Eagles are doing right now. I'm, they're going to tell you, I'm going to smack you in the mouth, and what you going to do about it? Or they're going to say, I'm going to hit you in your left eye, and you won't be able to do anything about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to telegraph. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, and you're not going to do anything about it. That's what the Eagles are doing right now. They're getting the same right up how good they are in the papers. Just, just like the Cowboys. Why the hell can't we perform? Because we don't have anybody to kick anybody in the ass. Period. Period. We don't. Excuse the French. We don't have anybody to do that. We really don't. I hope my mom is not watching this video. 
because this is something I, I don't want to, I do not swear in front of my mother, and I think it's wrong to do that. So, mom, if you do watch this video, I do apologize. So, I will uh, wash my mouth out with soap when I finish this video. So, that's not who I am. Um, are you pleased with this win? I mean, yes, yeah, a W. We got to continue to win. But is it false hope? Is it the boy that cried wolf? Are we being hoodwinked? Again and again and again? We got to do better than that on defense. I mean, I know a lot of people want to put this on Dak. And yeah, he deserves a lot of blame. When you throw that interception like that down in your end of the, end of the field, or their end zone. You can't not do that. You got to be focused. But damn. We continue to give up too many points. We have to have, we got to, we got to, we got to start stacking games. We got to start stacking good games. Stacking defensive games. We got to start stacking, preventing teams from scoring, keeping them at single digits. Field goals. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where we go from here. I mean, we're getting really close to playing the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, before, before, bef before the, the, the day's game, I just, yeah, you know, this day's game, um, Cowboys was averaging the, uh, for a starting quarterback for Dak. Dak was, how can I put this? Most team points per game. Starting QBs this season. Dak, 32.3. Patrick Mahomes, 29.2, and Jalen Hurst, 28.2. So that is uh, most team points per game. Put a 27 today. Um, I believe the Eagles put up a lot bigger number. I think the Eagles in their 40s. I'm not sure what that number was. Um, week 14, power rankings, Eagles one, Buffalo Bills two, the Dallas Cowboys three, Kansas City Chief four, the Minnesota Vikings who got their butt taken to them, uh, handed to them five, Cincinnati Bengals one, six, Seven 49ers, eight Dolphins, nine Ravens, ten Seahawks. So with the performance that we had today, I'm not sure. I, I don't see Dallas. Dallas can't be. We, we're not number three. We're not the third best team in the league right now. We're not. We got a quarterback that um, – we have a quarterback that – I think three games in a row has thrown interceptions. So he's continued to want to throw in very, very tight coverages. And maybe because the receiver cannot get over open, not running decent routes, you know, maybe it was too much, too much energy on, um, what's this? Uh, OB J. Maybe it was too much attention to that. And and in 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 addition to not practicing it in pads, this is this this is football. This is tackle football. This is on the home stretch of the postseason. Getting ready for the postseason. You practice. Everyone's have some sort of thing going on going on with them right now. Everybody's 
No one's 100% right now. No one should be unless you've been sitting on the sideline. No one's at 100% right now. The Eagles definitely, but they're still playing. They're, they're coming to play. And to me, they're the only consistent team in the entire league. I may want to throw Kansas City in there. I may want to throw Kansas City in there. No one else. So, we have the division leaders. Vikings, 49ers, Buccaneers, wild card for the playoffs, Cowboys, Giants, and the Seahawks. I don't know. I'm not happy the way we played um, because who we played. It's, it's because who we played. I'm J-Max Sports 24-7. If this is your first time coming to the channel, please um, like, share and subscribe and do comment. If you think this was a, uh, a poor performance by our team, please, you know, give me a comment. Um, do you want to play the Eagles? Like you think we ready to play the Eagles? I hate to say this. I, I hate giving any praise to the Philadelphia Eagles. I really do. Um, maybe we would show up. I mean, Dak pretty much has a winning record against the Philadelphia Eagles. He has a win winning record, so he hasn't played them this season. Um, but, you know, my my fear is that that ag uh, aggressive defense that we have going after the pass uh, to get sacks, I, I, in the way the Eagles play offense, uh, I think they're going to run a lot of screens, hit a lot of uh, – uh, that running back is going to play a significant role in catching the ball out of the backfield. A lot of rollouts. Jalen Hurst, again, he's, you know, it's going to be a lot of design plays just for Jalen Hurst to run the ball. Uh, when you think it's a passing down, they will run on a passing down. So the Philadelphia Eagles are not traditional. They will bear an on, unorthodox type of team. They play very aggressive on defense. They got an outstanding secondary. I mean, outstanding. They can play you man to man. When was the last time you seen an eagle for eagle team can play uh, teams man to man? When? But right to this this season, they can do that. The Eagles can play man to man. They rotate on the defensive line. They got an outstanding offensive line a Hall of Fame center. They're big up front. They are young. Terrific wideouts. It's a young team. They're going to be reckoned with. So we got to step up. We got to step up. You know, and if we, and if we, and if we did have signed OBJ, I, I, I'm hearing he's not, his physical, doing his physical, he's not really to the point where he can help us this season. Hey, focus on who we have right now. We need some leaders in the locker room on, on both sides, on, on all three phases, special teams, defense, and offense. Someone to kick somebody else in the, in the buttocks. We don't have that. We do not have that. And our coach is not going to do it. Our coach thinks that we, we should not practice with pads. J Max Sports 24 7. Hit me up. Like, share, subscribe. I am on Twitter, J Max Sports 24 7. So follow me there. Um, same for Instagram. Peace.